Hey, Kathy Neptune here with the Fork in the Road. Welcome to our new segment. We're taking you on a culinary journey through the local wonderful restaurant establishments that we he have here in the area. This evening, we're at Dario's in their location in Lunenburg. It's a fabulous family-style restaurant, small, cozy, warm, inviting, and a wonderful me menu they have, more than pizza. It's just everything freshly made uh, from seafood to homemade pastas and wonderful brick oven pizzas. So I hope you'll get a chance to come down and enjoy. This is, again, the location in Lunenburg. They also have another location in Fitchburg, so you can check their website for more details. We're going in. Come along with us. Hi, we're here at Dario's, and I'd like to introduce you to our hosts and hostess this evening, the owners of Dario's in Lunenburg, and that would be Dalmi. Come in, Dalmi, and say hi. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you very much for being here with us, and I really appreciate you take, um, the coming here to visit us and promote, Aww. and that's so sweet of you. Thank Aww. you very much. You're my very is, welcome. My name is Delmi McGanna, and my husband, Elmer Melendez. Come in and say hi to Elmer. Thank you so much for having us. It's so nice. Hello. Thank hi. you. And how long have you been in this location, Elmer? Since 2007. Wow, wow. And this, I understand you have another location. Yeah, we do have another location in uh, River Street in Fitchburg. Okay, same amount of time there. Is that a new new location? We open over there uh, four nights a week right now, looking to open Sundays, but now we open just for dinners Wednesday through Saturday. Oh, that's great. That's great. And do you have the same menu, Delmi, in the other location as well? Uh, we do have just the um, regular menu, like pasta dishes uh -huh. and salad, and, but we do not have the brick oven over there. But we have a nice program over there, like uh, mixology, and that's what we do different over there. And um, it's almost the, it's the same food what we have there. Everything is the same, but not uh, the pizza. Oh, okay. Then the pizza ovens make everything really special, right? Yeah, in this, in this location, the brick oven is like at the centerpiece of the, of the place, yes. It is. It makes it unique. And yeah. if you've never had brick oven pizza, this is the place to come. And if you could explain, tell me a little bit about the mixology, what that means. That means um, we have a different different ingredients we make uh, our own syrups is like um, we do not just have a something is coming in the bottle we just do that for example we have a papaya um, uh, honey syrup we make it and then we build that drink with the special liquors and it take a little bit more time and also um, we do have a different ice for make it different this kind of uh, techniques to do uh, drinks and eventually we can show you how we can do those drinks if you liked. That sounds amazing. We're going to not only eat good, but there's some wonderful drinks as well. And what inspires you with this restaurant? What would you like people to come away with? What's your specialty? And the best thing that we do in this restaurant is uh, everything is made by order. Every single sauce, pastas, fresh made pastas. We have the brick oven, which is unique in the area. There's not many brick ovens, restaurants around here. And uh, we try to avoid to people drive too far away. Oh, they, they, okay. they, 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 have, they don't have to drive far away. We have it here in Lunenburg. A true and, neighborhood yeah, yeah, restaurant. And this is so hard, but we're trying hard. We're working hard. Thanks, God, we're very blessed with a lot of good people coming oh. in here. Well, I have to say, it's one of our favorite spots, and every time I come here, it's like coming home. Everybody knows everybody, and it's just such a nice, warm feeling to have that in our community. And the ovens here, I just want to get a good look at this oven. How hot does this get? This oven can get up to 900 degrees or more if we want to. Now I have a, like a good 700 degrees at this point. 
Really? And how long does that take for pizza uh, to cook? Now it can be around five to six minutes, but when it's hot, it can be three or four minutes. Wow, you really have to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and tell me, tell me a little bit about your menu. What um, customers come in, like your favorite pizza that people order all the time. What would you recommend or what uh, would you say? We would be recommend, there is few pizzas we, uh, many customers love it. It's the margarita, traditional margarita pizza. And also we have a Dario's, Dario's pizza. It's so, um, roasted red peppers and prosciutto and the mozzarella. It's so delicious. And also we have this other pizza. It's called uh, Polo Broccolini. It's a white sauce with broccoli and chicken. Many people, they love that. They fell in love with this pizza. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. That sounds really good. And I understand you're the expert on seafood. Yes, we get to understand with the time a little bit about seafood. What I try to do here in the, in the area is what people most like. And uh, we find out that with scallops and haddocks, salmon doing very well here. Lobster, uh, shrimp risottos is other thing that we do very well, that work very well. But uh, one of the special that I have that I cannot take it away of my special menu is the Elmer's favorite sea scallops. We, we sell that. that. It's, a, it's a pensier scallops with a, a linguine with garlic and oil. Top it with a little barasech sauce that I put in the top. People love it. And that's very nice. It's one of the dishes that we sell. Oh, in sage. I wouldn't mm -hmm. think that's Butter amazing. Sage, yeah, yeah oh. it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I heard about maple salmon you were telling me earlier. Yes, usually we have this special for um, in fall. It's a maple maple glazed salmon. It's a creamy dish. It's so delicious. People love it. It's uh, coming with a homemade fettuccine pasta. And we always have uh, other dishes too. People love it. And, but this one is one of the most uh, popular for fall. Wow, it's hard to decide from a full course meal or for pizza. Do you have sandwiches as well? We do, uh, we do some sandwiches, not many, but we do have uh, maple oh. sap, uh, prosciutto, the parma sandwich, uh, chicken parmesan sap, buffalo wraps, a couple wraps. But uh, people come more for the, di for the dishes, for the dinners. Like today we have uh, the big haddock catatore. It's amazing. We have we beautiful baked haddock. We bake it and we have a nice sauce that we make by order. That go with pepper, mushrooms, and onions. It's it's really nice. Very sauce that you should try that one. Oh, it all sounds amazing. And with your permission, we're going to get a little sneak peek yes. into the kitchen and your wonderful staff that makes it and helps you make it happen. Yeah. So we'll be right back. Yeah. We're here with pizza master Rosie. And Rosie, tell me what we're making here. Thank you. Uh, what we're making right now is on one medium margarita. And it consists in the red sauce that is homemade by our restaurant. So that's like a pizza sauce, a yeah, red sauce. It's a pizza sauce with red sauce and all our secrets, <laughs> ingredients. No secrets here. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, kind of cheese is, what kind of cheese is that, Rosie? This cheese is fresh mozzarella. Ooh, yes. Good. We top in a little bit of Romano cheese and fresh mozzarella. Okay. And, oh, it goes into the oven like that? Yes. Wow, and how many minutes, Rosie? It's around four or five minutes maximum that if the oven is ready, the pizza could be done. Wow, is, yes. does anything else go on top? After that, at the end, we put it on the tray because it's gonna be for dining. We put it on basil and then we place it. Sounds good, sounds really good. Okay, we'll be right back, we're headed for the kitchen. Okay, we're going to be cooking today uh, Elmer's favorite sea scallops and uh, the lobster and shrimp and mussels is campy, okay? And we let, let's let start it with this. First, we gotta get the scallops, let it go. Let it go. Mm. 
Now we work with that special olive oil. We have some garlic. Some tomatoes. Capers. Fresh lemon. We have already the seafood portion and ready to go. The more important for us is here, get the, all the greens, get the right flavors, the right color, the garlic is starting to get happy. And that's what we want. pepper and this is the beginning of these dishes and a couple more minutes we're going to present them when they are ready to plate it okay the final product we have the mussels and shrimp scampi we're going to this plate this going for that Now this is a fighter plot. Now this coming from the kitchen to the table. We have the mussels and shrimp scampi. And we do have the Elmer's favorite sea scallops with a Enjoy. Hi, this is Gregory Benedot over at Dario's Restaurant, and I'm here with Elizabeth Bazanson. So we're going to make some beautiful craft cocktails. Liz is going to make her November's Kiss. All right, Liz, what's in the November's Kiss? November's Kiss has a pinch of salt, some aromatic bitters, it has fresh squeezed lime juice. It also has some cranberry juice. And then my secret ingredient is a cranberry and sage syrup. Ooh, that's exciting. And very tasty. Next, I'm gonna add the Brockman's gin. What makes the Broxman gin a little bit different than your typical gin? Instead of being heavier in the juniper flavor, it's really more citrus and berries. Gives it quite a different taste. Okay, okay, all right. So I have all my ingredients in here now. I'm gonna add some ice and I'm gonna give it a good shake, okay? All right, I'm excited to try this drink out. Um, is there anything special about this drink? So I entered an international gin competition hosted by Brockman's Gin, and I won an honorable mention for this region of the United States. It won me a write-up in Chilled Magazine, also a meet and greet with the owners of Brockman's Gin. Oh, all right, so we're in for a real treat then, aren't we? Oh, look at that shake. 
Oh, I'm so excited to try this drink out. I don't think you guys can smell the stuff that's happening. This smells wonderful. Oh, look at that. What's the garnish for this drink? The garnish for this drink is some fresh cranberries. Ooh. Tartness really kind of brings out that flavor as well. So what we're really looking for is some good balance. Yes, of course. Balance is key in any good cocktail. All right. Um, also some fresh sage. Well, what, what's the purpose of putting the fresh sage on top? Um, aromatic appeal, of course. Oh, to make everything smell really nice. Yes, yes. And then, uh, because it's called November's Kiss, I wanted to make it look like there was a little bit of snow on there. Oh. So we're going to put a few dashes of um, powdered sugar. Unless you live in New England, then <laughs> <laughs> <Of laughs> sometimes the, the snow comes in uh, spring. <laughs> like today. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are. This cocktail is called November's Kiss. Oh, this is wonderful. I think I'm, not, I'm just going to go ahead and take a sip. Enjoy. Oh, that is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to make a drink that I'm known for. And what's the name of that cocktail, Greg? Scarlet Morning. Ooh, sounds fantastic. And where did you come up with this cocktail? I came up for this I came up with this drink for Patron Perfectionist. This is a drink that actually won me a trip to Washington DC. Congratulations. Thank you. So what goes in it is some fresh papaya. Everything fresh around here. <laughs> then we add some we add some fresh lime, ju lime juice. We add some fresh honey papaya syrup that we make ourselves in-house. And then we muddle this. And why do we muddle this, Greg? So that we can get extra papaya flavor into the drink that is lively and brings it to life. In fact, the reason the drink's called Scarlet Morning is because if you grew up in a tropical climate, it's very common to have papaya and honey or papaya and lime for breakfast. So this is a common thing to do. So this is kind of how I put the drink together. Sounds very interesting. I bet it's gonna be delicious. Okay, so then we're gonna add some Patron Lime to kind of enhance some of that lime flavor. And then we're gonna add some tequila to kind of give it a little bit more backbone, some Blanco tequila. This is looking good, Liz. I can't wait to taste it. All right. So now we're gonna add some ice and we're gonna shake it up. Isn't that shake amazing, guys? Now, Greg, I see that you have already rimmed this glass. Can you tell me what you've put on there? Oh, of course I can. So that is a sugar ginger rimming. That sounds delicious. And it works really well with the tequila. That little bit of zest that you get from the ginger with the kind of earthiness that you're getting from the tequila blends really well together. And of course, Liz has now strained the drink into the glass and is now adding some fresh ice to it. All right. Now she's gonna be garnishing this drink with a little bit of ginger ground ginger on top to add to some of the aromatics and then a beautiful orchid because we used honey and well we all know bees make honey from flowers. Greg this is a beautiful cocktail it was very easy to make and I cannot wait to try it. All right. 
So Liz, a little birdie told me that you happened to compete in a competition hosted by Woodford Reserve, the Manhattan Experience. Yes, that is true, Greg. So what drink are you going to be making for us from there? I'm going to make for you today uh, my version of a Manhattan, and it's called Zelda's Manhattan. Okay. What goes in the Zelda Manhattan? So I used a little bit of orange uh, bitters, some dry curacao, and then I infused my sweet vermouth with 70% uh, bittersweet chocolate. Um, I chose these ingredients because they all blended very well with some of the flavors found in Woodford Reserve. Ooh, 70% chocolate infused vermouth. So we're going to get a little orange, a little chocolate that's going to go great with this whiskey. Yes, it's, it's quite a delicious combination. Okay, so first goes in the orange bitters. And then what's this? The dry carousel. Okay. Next is my cocoa vermouth. That's 70%. 70% cocoa added to that vermouth. Okay. And now, which Woodford whiskey are we using? That bourbon? I'm using their straight bourbon whiskey. Oh, this is going to be great. So, would you think that this drink would go well with a steak? Oh, Dario's has a fantastic hand-cut New York sirloin steak. I think this Manhattan would pair very nicely with it. Okay, okay. And I'm also noticing that this ice is a little bit clear. Uh, yes, we use some special ice in this cocktail. Um, at both locations, we make very special ice. Um, we try to make it the most pure and most clear as possible. All right, and we're gonna strain this into what? We're gonna strain this into a chilled coupe. Oh, this looks delicious, Liz, looks delicious. Thank you. And then for the garnish, I'm gonna use an orange wheel and a very special Luxardo cherry. Do you happen to know what position you placed in this competition? I placed fourth in the regionals. And uh, what does it take to actually get into regionals? Um, a lot of hard work and dedication and some really good recipes. Okay, all right. I want to thank everybody at Dario's here in Lunenburg for their hospitality, their kindness, and their time, and their expertise and everything. Thank you to you, Liz, and to Greg. Again, congratulations on all your wins in mixology. It's an honor to be here with you tonight. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. And Delmi, and to Elmer, thank you so much for having us here in your hospitality and your kindness. I hope everybody comes here to the Lunenburg and the Fitchburg locality as well. We are so thrilled. Thank you all for watching. And remember, when you come to the fork in the road, take it. <laughs>